All right, fellas, we're gonna do a quick workout here. It's uh, it's kind of cold, so I got a sweater on. I'm gonna do deadlifts. I got lightweight right now, so here, let's do this. I got uh, lightweight, so I'm gonna do uh, eight deadlifts with two plates aside, and then I'll do RDLs for five reps. That'll be somewhat of a warm up. Um, and then I'll go into uh, power cleans, uh, I think it's seven reps, and then uh, into some burpees and push ups with a weighted vest. It's a quick workout, I need to get it done quick and get back to work. Um, so let's do this. And I got Jocko podcast on, I hope that's okay. Uh, from his end, but it's a podcast. I'll put a link in below. I just like listening to something when I'm working out uh, in the garage. Uh, and uh, it's a good podcast, so I'll get to lifting. In the morning, the tender green of young leaves shed in the flat light, followed hidden twisting paths toward a narrow gorge behind the front line. On the dawn of noon, our artillery launched into a furious from that echoed and re-echoed through the, through the wooded hollows. For the first time, we heard it was meant by the expression, drum fire, to have been captured. Loud cheers rang out. A feeling of up and out. At last, at last, the long four order. In a long line, we move forward toward the pattern of heavy rifle fire. So, I'll do some shooting now. In between sets, and do three sets of this. I need to get more weight. I need to get more weight. Get more weight tomorrow or something. Then, death's call slip through the ranks. Ambulance men to the front. A little later, we passed the spot that had been hit. The casualties had already been removed. Bloody scraps of cloth and flesh had been left on the bushes around the crater. A strange and dreadful sight. The area around the jumping off position had been deforested by the shells. In the ripped up no man's land lay the victims of the attack still facing the enemy. Their grave tunics barely stood out from the ground. A giant form with red, blood spattered beard stared fixedly at the sky, his fingers clutching the spongy ground. A young man tossed in a shell crater, his features already yellow with impending death. He seemed not to want to be looked at. He gave us a cross shrug and pulled his coat over his head and lay still. In a curious failure of comprehension, I looked alertly about me for possible targets for all this artillery fire, not apparently realizing that it was actually ourselves that the enemy, enemy gunners were trying for all they were worth to hit. Hey, man. Fuck we had our first fatality, a shrapnel ball and a rip through rifle and stone stoppers carotid artery. Three packets of lint were sodden with blood in no time. In a matter of seconds, he bled to death. In the rising mist, I leapt out of the trench and found a shrunken French corpse. Flesh like moldering fish green green with greenishly through slits in the shredded uniform. Turning around, I took a step back in horror. Next to me was a figure crouched in a tree, as though he had just collapsed. All around were dozens more, rotted, dried, stiffened to mummies, frozen in the eerie dance of death. The French must have spent months in proximity of their fallen comrades without burying them. A headless torso was jammed in shot up beams. Head and neck One tip with uh, deadlifts, black flesh. don't put the weight, I a lot of people tell you put the weight uh, next to right against your shin. Lay on his back so stick it eyes and fist still right there. Up Get toward the middle of your foot, stick your ass out. Yeah, you shouldn't come forward that all that much, but that you're not going in the of the war. here. You're sticking his your ass way out, inside out, pulling up like that. And his empty ball so, bar above the middle of the foot, not pressed right against your shin. So that right there is a portion of the opening chapters of a book called Storm of Steel. Don't <laughs> the introduction of the book 
he says Storm of Steel is one of the great books of World War One, if not the greatest. Ernst Younger, like the author, Ernst Younger's book on the 1914 war, Storm of Steel, is without question the finest book on war that I know, utterly honest, truthful, in good faith. There is nothing in it about the politics of war, nothing even on its outcome, and very little on the wider strategy of its conduct. War is all, fighting is all. Everything else is cropped away. And from first to last, in the affirmative, it is the work of a man whom the war made. That was someone explaining the book. Someone explaining the book. And just how it is. It's just about the fighting. Yeah, so it just... It's just, just about the right fighting. Anymore. Yeah. And that's one of the things that makes it so powerful. And it's also one of the things that reflects very well what it feels like to be on the front lines. Yeah. When politics don't matter. Mm-hmm. When the outcome doesn't matter. The outcome of the broader war doesn't matter anymore. Chains, trenches dug through ravaged gardens, in among sprouting bulbs of onions, wormwood, rhubarb, narcissus, buried under weeds, on the neighboring fields' grain barns, through whose roofs grain the grain was sprouting. All that with half buried communication trench running through it. And you can't let that sneak so up. seven, uh. Seven hand cleans, just quick little hand cleans, and uh, a bit more shooting, and it's a really short distance on shooting. It's not. You know, it's just the act of the skill when you're fatigued. I like, I like adding that in. So this is some cleans, and then some body weight stuff, and then we're done. So three times seven plus the. Archery as the uh, respirator. Rats. Oh, jeez. And talking about life in the trench, we are real renaissance people. We are real renaissance people who can change our plans to anything. And the trench is making their thousand demands on us every day. We sink deep shafts, construct dugouts, concrete pillboxes, rig up wire entanglements, divine drainage systems, revet, support, level, raise. Then the stretcher bearers come along to carry him to the dressing station. The stretcher poles collide with the corners of the fire trees. No sooner has the man disappeared than everything is back to the way it was before. Spreads a few shovelfuls of earth over the red bubble, and everyone goes back to whatever he was doing. Only a new recruit leans against the revetment, looking a little green about the gills. He's endeavoring to put it all together. Such an incredibly brutal assault, so sudden, with no warning given. It can't be possible. It can't be real. Poor fellow. In the morning, the sentry out on our flank was shot through both cheekbones. The blood spurted out of him in thick bouts. The man to cap it all was Lieutenant Vaughn Ewald, visiting our sector to take pictures of Sack End, barely 50 yards away, turned to climb down from the outlook. A bullet shattered the back of his skull and he the spot. So this stuff, I'm focusing on that the night, explosive, the wound, same with the deadlift. Full, uh, next will be have more taxing on the lungs, and then later I'm doing hill sprints with my dog as well. You can kind of get the the matter of factness that he delivers so much of this with. To, oh, this guy was shot, this guy was shot, this guy was going off. It's just like boom, boom, boom. It mentions how he noticed someone else reacting to that. What do you mean? Well, it's just really not but. Right. Just the other guy reacting to it stands up. 
you know, that's how matter of fact it is. And so that reminds me, I, I believe that for, for people to read, you know, the bulk of middle of the book, those details. But then I kind of forward here more towards the end. that the tank battle at Cambrai had made in our front. Even though we were pleased to play a part of the hammer having so long been the enemy, we wondered whether the troops still exhausted in Flanders would be up to the job. That said, I had every confidence in my company. They had never let anyone down yet. They're horrific to watch. And you realize what this war did to people. I pulled this section out because he was a guy who probably had gone completely insane. And he said, saying, this guy feigned insanity. He just said, you know what, this guy's faking. You know, he really thought it was he for real. He probably was. He says, you know what, beat this guy up, now he's suffering, and now we can go. That's exactly what happened. Right, and that's, that's kind of the attitude, right? Or you were saying, that's kind of the attitude back then. It was the attitude they talk about. I mean, I've, I've paid more attention to it on the British side, mm -hmm. but you know, if you came back from a war with all your limbs and you went into a medical ward and you were in there because you had psychological problems, they, it was because you were a coward in their words. Yeah. Which is sick. It's sickening. Yeah. And that's what war does do to people. You know, we got to remember that, that it impacts people in, in a horrible way. And this war, to be especially more so than maybe, primarily because of the conditions and from the mortars and the shell. No control. And also, you can see these guys had no control over their safety. They didn't get told to do something, they didn't have to do it. And if you weren't going to do it, you were <sighs> You know, if you were to protest and say, this doesn't seem like a good plan, it wouldn't be, well, okay, what's your strategic opinion? What's your tactic for What's your tactical brain tell you? No, no, you're a coward. <laughs> and that's why it's so important, really, in any endeavor, especially in war, but in war, in business, to, to have an open mind from a leadership position to listen to what people are saying. Because they might be right. And if you're I guarantee there were thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of soldiers that would have said, hey, you know what? This doesn't make any sense. And part of it is incumbent upon them to say, you know what? I mean, it's like we talked about with Napoleon's maxim, right? Napoleon's maxim was if you are aware of a problem with an order and you carry it out and you get your guys killed, you're culpable. So that was a quick workout, 20 minutes. Um, Jim, I'll do, she sometimes will do longer workouts here, but um, just quick stuff. I'll put the workout down below along with some content to read and obviously a free workout that you guys can follow. So uh, hopefully this helps, especially those guys with limited equipment. And um, maybe those guys want to save a bit of money. This was about a thousand bucks. All this stuff was a thousand bucks Canadian. So like 700, probably get it for 700, 600 in the States. Depends on where you go. That's a year membership to the gym I go to. So do this stuff at home saves you, start saving you money after a year. But anyway, it's a great workout, work on explosiveness. Uh, burn some fat, now I gotta go eat, and a bit later on, I'll split up my cardio, so I'll just do some hill sprints with Teddy. Anyway, hope you guys are doing awesome. 
I'll talk to you soon. Click that link down below for that free workout. Take care.